Moses is the one, he is God's chosen instrument who wrote the book of Genesis for us and the first five books of our Bibles. And the way that Moses has structured the book of Genesis, it's wonderful and it flows from one section to the next. Literary critics of old used to try to make divisions, unnecessary divisions uh, throughout Genesis and really through all the Pentateuch. And they would say that this was reflective of a certain God and this was reflective of, of another God and it was all kind of piecemeal put together. But the book of Genesis wonderfully flows together uh, from one section to the next. And there's great literary cohesion and many scholars today recognize that. But even if they didn't, it's still there. There's great literary cohesion, theological cohesion, and there's a wonderful message that is there in the way that Moses has structured the book of Genesis. Uh, many people will often reference the, the two major sections of Genesis, Genesis chapters 1 through Genesis chapter 11 as being primeval history, and then you have Genesis 12 through 50 being patriarchal history. But there's also maybe a, a further way that we can break that down, and that is through these literary divisions. Moses used a word that is one word in the Hebrew, but often translated various ways in our English Bibles. It is the Hebrew word toledot, uh, and that's often translated in our Bibles as these are the generations of, or this is the genealogy of, or this is the book of. And we have that in 11 different places throughout Genesis. And the first one that we have is Genesis 2-4, and that is the toledot, the heavens and the earth. And so uh, Moses sets the scene for all that will come after that. And then we have uh, the one of Adam's generation in, Gen in Genesis chapter 5, uh, where it, it binds together the garden with Adam's, uh, Adam's life all the way to Noah's life. And so we transcend all of that sin and fall and all the destruction that comes and ensues because of Adam's sin, and it takes us right through to Noah's life. And then we have Noah's Toledot or generations of in Genesis 6, 9. We have the sons of Noah in Genesis 10. Because how will the earth be populated? How will creation be restored? How will this message of hope that was told to us back in Genesis 3.15, how will that go forth after God has just finished destroying everything in the world? Well, He will do that through the sons of Noah. And even that promise will whittle down to one of those sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But it will be through Shem and Shem's line in which the blessings will go forward. And so we have the sons of Noah. Then we have the, the Toledot of Shem in Genesis 11. And the Toledot of Terah in Genesis 11, 27 and following, which sets the scene for another figure who will come, and that is Abram, who will become Abraham, who will be the one by God's grace, a total act of God's grace, who will be the recipient and the first one to hear the promises of God and anticipation of how he's going to bless all the nations of the earth. And then we have Ishmael in Genesis 25. Isaac, again in Genesis 25, verse 19. And some will say that we have two for Esau in Genesis 36, 1 and following. And then there is a final one given of Jacob in Genesis 37, verse 2. As you read through Genesis, you, you see these Toledotes, these generations. And this is really key to understanding the structure of Genesis, but also in how Genesis flows from one section to the next. And it's all the same message. And in each flow into the next section, that message becomes enlarged. The promises become greater. The anticipation builds like a snowball rolling down the hill. And in our Bibles, this, this word, this account, this book of, these records of, this generation of, this history of, all which can translate that Hebrew word Toledot, that is all setting the scene for all that will come later on. And Moses uses this structure to demonstrate all that, uh, that Genesis is not only a single literary unit, He's not just writing a masterpiece for literature fans to read and study under a microscope, but it's a single theological message as well. It is a message that has an ultimate point, an ultimate focus, an ultimate place that it is going. And it will all end and it will all come to fruition and all lines will intersect in this Messiah. And there are glimpses and hints and prophecies of this Messiah at every step of the way in all of these Toledotes, sometimes through the promises of great blessing and anticipation, sometimes through sinful, painful consequences of man's debauchery, of man's sin, and the mess that man has brought himself into. But the anticipation continues, and it will continue long after Genesis is completed into the next books of the Bible, all the way into the New Testament, till we get to Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. 
and that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And there we have uh, the first of many connections that are made back to the book of Genesis to say that one that was anticipated there has now come and he is God's son. He is the chosen one. We must believe on him. And the story continues right through the mission and the message of Jesus the Messiah.